to uh, unmute and tell me do you have castanets or not, guys? Just for me to have an idea, or maybe send a message, or not too sure. <clears throat> I also, I don't have. You don't have, okay, I so. Have if I you have them, but I'm afraid to use them. Oh, <laughs> you have them, but you're afraid to use them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because it's dangerous. Oh, okay. I'm really scared. <laughs> but you know what uh, you can do? Do you have, uh, you can just tame the sound. I have. You know these little socks. Oh. Okay, so that's my that's actually my little one when she was little. Now she's a toddler, <laughs> two and a half. But I kept them. It's my treasure, and it's also like a. I have a yeah. Well, I have several. But if you get these baby socks or anything that you can handmade, you can uh, let me put my castanets on. Okay. Bear with me. So what? Well, first of all, how you put your castanets on? There's a, if you have castanets, if you don't have castanets, don't worry, it's absolutely fine. You can just, uh, <coughs> God, I'm talking too much. And it's like, I love talking and in general I talk too much, but because I haven't given classes for a while, I think it's just, <coughs> my throat is, is not used to it. So, yeah, so then, if you like it and you feel that there's something that you can enjoy, uh, you can decide on buying a pair of castanets. So you can find very cheap ones to start just oh god that's a, to start maybe that's the neighbor complaining about me. So uh, yeah, to start practicing these castanets that they are professional, they are I think around 150 pounds, something like that. But I like to think that this is an instrument, guys. I mean, I don't like to think it is an it is an instrument. So that's why it's you know it's, it's just um, artisanally made, and it's really you know some of them they are a piece of art. So it also what we make of them, but it's also as everything. It's an investment, but you can start. Uh, practicing with very cheap ones just to get used to the technique and then if you think you like it you can decide just to invest in a pair or maybe if you decide to travel to Spain when all this is finished and you go to uh, <clears throat> you can even go to the where they are the makers in Seville they are amazing custom and makers so you can go to Seville and you know uh, enjoy a bit of uh, life there and buy some castanets. Oh, I just feel like I want to do it. Oh my god! <laughs> so, <coughs> so yeah, good. So I'm gonna st uh, stop rambling. Uh, how do we put the castanets on? So you see, I have also a video about castanets on my YouTube channel and on how to tie the knot of the castanets, which is uh, something that no, not many people know. And <coughs> it's a slip knot, okay. So what is important is to know that the knot always goes in the part that is closer to your body, okay. So um, obviously uh, there's uh, some castanets. If they are very beginners, they don't have this mark. But in general, the castanets that have a mark on the right castanet, okay. So there's a tiny. Uh, marking here in this part this means that the right is uh, that's the right castanet you put it obviously in your thumb okay there's other type of castanets that they are wear, worn here in this middle finger that more like for folkloric thing like jota and uh, kind of folk dances and they are here but they are played in a different way they play like just percussion like that <laughs> Okay, so they are not played with the fingers like these castanets. Uh, so yeah, thumb. Always the knot goes closer to your body. So don't put it the other way around. I saw so many videos on YouTube, people putting the castanets the other way around. And I'm like, no, don't put the video and saying that you know how to do it. <laughs> so the knot in the back, okay. The right with the mark, if you have a mark, and then just try for the knot to be in the middle of your finger. That's the proper way to put it. Okay, so you see that it's my thumb, 
the castanets, uh, the knot is the closest to my body, okay? And then the other part of the cast, the, the, the cord is in your bed nail, okay? That's the area. <coughs> then I'll do the same with the left. Good. Okay. And if you have sordinas or something to tame the sound, could be good for your neighbors and to be able to sometimes I practice while I watch telly or do something else or you know if the little one is asleep I obviously I don't take this uh, out of my castanets very often because it's just the, the sound is really loud so yeah to be apartment friendly home friendly is much better to have this I used to sue them when I was you know and when I have a bit more time, like, you know, taking two pieces. So if you are crafty, you can do it uh, just with a piece of uh, fabric and then you kind of do like a sleeve for them. But I found that baby socks are super cheap. And for me, this is, these are very special because they are actually from my daughter. So it's something that I, I treasure. So you see them, there's no sound. Well, there's a tiny bit of sound, but nothing that the the neighbors can complete, uh, complain about, hopefully. So that's how I normally practice at home, always, with the sordina. I don't know how to, you translate it in English, but it's kind of, you know, just uh, m m making, m muting the sound. So, sound muted, or, I don't know, whatever. Uh, Lufula. How you call it? Lufula. Lufula. Muffler. Ah, muffler. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Oh, good. That's a good one. Muffler. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like muffling sound. Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. You see, it's just that when I told you that we're learning from each other, I'm the I'm the first one that I'm learning a lot a lot of things on a I would say daily basis, but I would say hourly basis. <laughs> so, okay, so that's great mufflers. <clears throat> uh, hola Maria, would you send? <laughs> I got distracted. Good. So if we use that now. Uh, what do we play with? Okay. So I don't know if there's any left-handed in the class. I'm gonna play with the right because I'm right-handed. But just think, if you are left-handed and you prefer to do the ria to have your dominant hand with the left, that's absolutely fine. There's people that play the castanet with the left uh, or with the right. What do I mean about playing the castanet with the right or the left is that the the hand that does the carretilla, okay, so the four fingers scratching. Because one hand just makes this sound and the other uses the four fingers. So in this case, because I'm talking about, you know, from the point of view of a right-handed person, I'm going to uh, say that is uh, the carretilla is with the right. But if you are left-handed, you just need to translate everything the, all the way around. So your right hand will do the tempo, the ta, and the left will do the carretilla. Which I am quite hopeless doing it with the left. Okay? Good. So I'll, I'll take the mufflers out in a minute, but just to, to give you some concepts without being too loud. So uh, you, we play with these two fingers. The two middle fingers, okay? These two fingers. You can also play just with the middle finger. But it's easier for a beginner to start learning with the two fingers in the castanet. Because it's, um, you, can gain, you can gain more strength quicker than if you do it just with one. And also with one, uh, the castanet can be a bit more flimsy and the sound can be, if you are not very proficient, it can get a bit like, okay, so I recommend you to use the two fingers to learn, okay? And then if you feel like you want to do things faster and you're more comfortable just touching with one uh, finger, you are okay to do so. But just for you to know what's the proper technique. I normally, when I play, when I, play I just play with this finger and this finger, but just, you know, just after years and years. But for the sake of, you know, being proper uh, learning technique, two fingers, okay? So the left hand, or your left hand at the right hand, the left hand will always do this, okay? With the two fingers doing the percussion in the, kind of in the middle of the castanet, 
The castanets, they also have sizes. Okay, so when you buy a castanet, you need to be mindful of the size. Normally, the size of the castanet needs to be like your palm. Uh, but there's sizes number three, number four, number five, six, seven, etc. I think mine's are a six or a seven, I'm not too sure. But just be aware that castanets have sizes like shoes. It doesn't mean that if you're playing on smaller a castanet that you should be is not gonna sound but it's just not as comfortable as if you had the proper size so ideally when you buy a pair of castanet you <coughs> sorry um, you go to a castanet uh, maker and you try them on and you try the size and the sound because the sound is very different as well that's very uh, the ones that they are very um, high pitch and then others they are like super low and then there's also castanets that they are more recommended for male players and that they are more bass like dark sound and, and for women that there's a different sound but you can absolutely you know you just my recommendation is just if you have the chance and you're lucky to do so just go and get like 20 pairs of castanets. That's what I do when I go and buy castanets because I, I spoil myself uh, once, uh, you know, uh, not very often, but I try to go, I have so many castanets and I love buying them and trying them on and playing with them and feeling, uh, uh, you know, what's the appropriate one for you. Also, you have to make your castanet. What do I uh, mean about making the castanet? When you put the castanet on for the first time, it sounds horrible. So sound like this is not mine. It's like it doesn't belong to me. Okay. The more you play them, you make them, and then you end up being really comfortable to the point where if someone else touches my castanets, I can feel it. And then it's like when I put them back, I'm like someone touched my castanets. So that's something very personal because you kind of make them and the the. Um, the knot and the, the cord kind of adapts to your finger and to your way of playing. That sounds like, oh yeah, whatever, but it's true, I promise you. Okay, <laughs> so it becomes such a personal thing, uh, the castanets. Good, so left hand like this, right hand is with the four fingers, okay? So the four fingers playing, that's it. And we can call these names for the castanets. So this, the left is ta, ta, or we say a because we do ri a. Okay, so that's the ri a. If we do ta ri a, we will do left ta and then ri and then a. So I say ta ri a, ta ri a. Okay, or ri a ri a pi ta. This is our friend P. So the right or the left, if you're left-handed, do the R and the P. Okay. So when it's a golpe, just one is P ta P ta. Right, left. P ta P ta. Okay. One thing that I haven't uh, said anything is about the posture. Obviously now we're doing this kind of thing super close and this is absolutely wrong and incorrect. So when we are really playing castanets and working on the uh, technique at home, we try to get the posture as correctly as we can. I know it's tiring, uh, so then after a while you can relax or obviously if you're seated in the sofa just playing castanets and trying to uh, improve your your technique you're just gonna do it in whatever position but then it's very important that you keep the shape of the hands and of the arms once in a while so you get used to this because later on you're gonna be dancing with castanets so that's something that if you're not used to dance with the uh, with the castanet and making a proper movement and a proper arm work you're gonna struggle a lot because castanets they are another layer of coordination okay so you need to when you're dancing with castanets there's also people that they just play castanets, so they are uh, they do concerts with castanets and they are amazing. But the level they have, they are musicians. Okay, when they are just playing castanets for orchestras, they become a musician. But the dancer needs to be kind of a musician with that the best possible level of playing castanets, and then you have to dance with them, and they become a complement and something that enriches and 
yeah, and embellish your dancing and your art. So it's kind of a once you've done your technique and your practice here, then go on the studio and try to start doing this technique with a few arm movements and then you can just transfer to some dancing with the castanets. Okay, so that's kind of the the progression. Uh, but so this is kind of an introduction. So I'm just uh, introducing you on the what are the movements. And then on following classes, we will be building a tabla, the castañuelas. Same as we did with the footwork, and we will be building up on the footwork. It's just something that you build a routine, and then you practice that routine, and you make it more and more difficult every time. But it's kind of to create a yeah, series of exercises to work on the technique. So going back to the technique, I, we are supposed to be all like super... Uh, well positions in our first position okay where we're playing castanets another thing that is important is just not to move your wrist meaning this I'm exaggerating so you can see that yeah? so kind of this thing that can be a very common mistake just to move it like that this is really bad and you shouldn't be uh, practicing like that because then it's difficult to you know get rid of these habits so just think that this needs to stay uh, I don't know how it, still, okay? So nothing like this. Good, yeah? So, a still position, nothing like that. Okay? That's a normal, like this. Or if you're doing it in this position. Any position that you take, avoid this kind of movement. Okay? Good, so pita. Our friends pita. P, left, ta, the right. P, ta. Ta. Good. So the the that's, uh, the first movement just with the two fingers. Then we have the ria. Okay. So the ri is always always finish the ri with the a, which is called the ta in the other situation. So ria, ria. Good. Something very common is ria, ria, pita. Good. So I'm gonna take my sordinas out. Okay. So. Ria, ria, pita is the four fingers. Two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. The four fingers, and then the fifth is with the other hand. Good. We'll make exercises. We'll make exercises to 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 make this better and to work on the independency of the fingers. Okay. I'm just introducing you to the. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, to the parts of the <coughs> of the castanet technique. So <coughs> then uh, we did the tapi, pita, tapi, pita, the ria, ria, pita, ria, ria, pita. Then we have the chin. The chin is basically the castanets going together. Boom. Just one with the other one. Okay. So we don't do it. It's a common mistake that we do it in the middle, like one against each other. We don't do it like that, okay? We don't uh, do the chin like that. The name is chin, chin, okay? We do it kind of crossing one on the top of the other. Yeah, you see the difference between this? That's an no, okay? No. One goes on the top of the other. If you are left-handed, the same, okay? The left will go on top of the right, if that makes sense. And normally, uh, we do the chin combined with pita. Okay, so chin pita, chin pita, chin pita, chin pita. Or we can do chin tapi, chin tapi, chin pita, chin tapi, chin pita. We'll work on that because this, the sound of the p and the ta, they are different. One uh, has a higher pitch than the other. Okay, so that's why if you decide to do uh, different, to play differently in order with the right or the left, it will affect also the pitch of your castanets. Okay, so and the chin can be done once against the other, as we just did, or we can do it in the body as well. 
So here in the forearm, yeah, so, and it doesn't. Yeah, here as well, in the shoulder. even in your hip. There's, I mean, there's several combinations, but in general, the hip, hip, they are like the most common places. And it's actually quite nice when you're dancing. Yeah, so it's kind of a, a cheeky bit. Good. So that's the, the chin, okay? So we explore the pi, the ta, the ria, and the chin, these are the parts of the castanet technique. There's no more than that. Now, what you do is just combining this in a hundred million ways. So you make it as rich as your imagination allows you to do, okay? The ria done quickly is the carretilla, okay? So this one, two, three, four, five, quickly and uh, all together becomes a carretilla, okay? So there's no more than that, guys, I promise you. There's no uh, like a massive list of movements and of ways to play the castanets. These are the basic movements of the castanet technique. Then what I will do is just go through a uh, series of exercises that will uh, allow you to develop your technique and to get better and to do a million combinations and to gain a, a strength and speed and everything and then you can do combinations whatever yeah so it just uh then it becomes uh, whatever you want to play or whatever you want to do, but just with these basic parts of the castanet technique. It's no more than that, I promise you guys. It's not rocket science. It's same as with the footwork technique. It's practice, 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 and have the concepts clear, and to just know your castanet, use your mufflers, and play them as much as you can. So yeah, basically that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. This is just a bit of a taster. Then we'll just uh, start working on this um, castanet series of exercises. And yeah, for those of you, I'm just gonna check if there's uh, still some people there. That's good. <laughs> Nobody fell asleep. It's nice. So, <laughs> so. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed the classes, if you join the others, and uh, just please uh, join the Open Flamenco Project on Facebook, send me some comments there. I will try to upload, if I got them right, the videos of these classes as a private link, so I'll share it with the group, and so then you can, um, if you're not able to join uh, live, you can still follow the classes because my idea is just to reach as many people as I as I can. You know everything is free, so I'm not charging for any of these classes. I'm just generally trying to, you know, uh, during these times that, you know, we are all, well, we don't know what's going on, do we? It's just, what's this? <laughs> what's happening right now? And in my case, where I'm, uh, I'm still working, some of you might know, some of you might not, I'm a nurse, so apart from a dancer, and I'm, uh, I'm working. So, uh, and I'm trying to stay safe and to protect myself and my family, but you know, I'm trying my best, but who knows what happened, but we're all like, we need something like to, you know, really cheer us up and kind of get us together. We feel quite isolated and some people have houses with a garden, some people is stuck in a tiny apartment and it's just challenging times for all of us. So I'm just trying to, I mean, I'm not saint, but I just had that idea that maybe, you know, Flamenco can help you a bit and to be in touch with all the people even virtually. So yeah, uh, just, yeah, send me messages, feedback, and I really enjoyed being with you guys. And I hope you found useful what we did. This is a tiny taster. We will go in depth 
with so many things and if you decide to follow with the classes I'll be very happy to see you here again uh, on Thursday or in the following classes. Just remember to book on Eventbrite so I can know how many people we are so we can get over what uh, the Zoom allowances. That's my little one. <laughs> and <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much and hopefully see you soon and stay in touch and stay safe. Okay guys, take care. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.